Good evening, guys. Welcome to Evening Devotion. I was talking with my dad today. I had to take him to a uh, doctor's appointment. And I was talking to him about how the clouds looked really weird the other day. And he said he talked to a few people that saw it, too. So this isn't isolated. A lot of people noticed it. And I told him, I said, I think it was because we got hit with a massive solar storm. And it did a lot. It changed a lot. <laughs> and, and they're only going to get worse from here. Signs in the sun, moon, and stars, guys. It's happening all around us. More and more signs telling us this is it, folks. This is it. You've got, you've got to be ready. You need to be watching. Because he's making it vibrantly clear. I mean, short of coming down here and standing on a hilltop and screaming out to the whole world, hey, y'all, it's about to happen. You need to be ready. I'll be back in this much time. Which, that's pretty much what he's doing with everything that's going on. Because he gave us a book that warned us about it. So, yeah, crazy times we're living in, amazing times we're living in. Tonight, we're going to be reading out of Matthew 9, 6. The Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Let's swing over here. So the whole, ver the whole verse says, But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Let's go read this in context. One, two three, four, five. Verse one, it's Jesus heals a paralytic. Verse one, so he got into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own city. Then behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. See, a lot of times we put so much importance on healing, we forget it's our sins being forgiven that's the most important thing. Me being healed is nothing compared to me being sealed. Me being healed is nothing compared to me being sealed. Of all the things I need, it's forgiveness is the most important. Verse 3, And at once some of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, You think evil in your hearts. For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise and walk. Jesus was doing something interesting here. He was telling them to forgive each other. What's easier? Your sins are forgiven? Or arise and walk? Most of y'all don't even have enough faith to tell somebody to get up and walk and have them be healed. But you have more than enough faith. Even a drop is enough to tell someone, I forgive you of what you've done against me. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. He proved a point. I can do both. But I'm showing you that you have that power too. I forgive you for what you've done against me. I forgive you for everything. We're, we're commanded to be forgiving. Verse 7, And he rose and departed to his house. Now when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, who had given such power to men. Incredible. All the things we focus on today, the most important one we miss. Behold, one of the great physicians of mightiest arts, he has power to forgive sin. Notice in the thing he says, he said, I have the power to forgive sin on earth. While he was here, before he was even crucified, he had the ability to forgive people of their sins before he was crucified. How incredible, how interesting. Think about that for a minute. It'll start to cause you to wonder about a lot of things that happened in the Old Testament. While here, he lived below, before the ransom had been paid, before the blood had been literally sprinkled on the mercy seat. He had power to forgive sin. That's what I just, literally what I just said. Before it ever happened, he had the power to forgive sin. Hath he not power to do it now that he hath died? If he had the power to do it while he was alive, he certainly has the power and authority to do it now. What power must dwell in him, who to the uttermost farthing has faithfully discharged the debts of his people? He has boundless power, now that he has finished transgression and made an end of sin. If ye doubt it, see him rising from the dead. Behold him, in ascending splendor, raised to the right hand of God. See, he died on the cross. He was buried. He rose. He ascended to the Father. He has all the power. Hear him pleading before the Eternal Father, pointing to his wounds, urging the merit of his sacred passion. What power to forgive is here? 
He hath ascended on high, and received gifts of four men. He is exalted on high to give repentance and remission of sins. The most crimson sins are removed by the crimson of his blood. At this moment, dear reader, whatever thy sinfulness, Christ has power to pardon, power to pardon thee, and millions of such as thou art. A word will speak it. He has nothing more to do to win thy pardon. All the atoning work is done. He can, in answer to thy tears, forgive thy sins today and make thee know it. He can, in answer to thy tears, forgive thy sins today and make thee know it. He can breathe into thy soul at this very moment a peace with God, which path, or his path is all understanding, which shall spring from perfect remission of thy manifold iniquities. I'm speaking to one person in particular. You're listening. And you've been doubting this. You've been questioning this. And you're wondering if it was even, if this is even worth it. You're wondering if it's real. You're wondering if any of it's real. I can tell you with full confidence it is because he forgave me too. He forgave all of us watching. His desire is that you would have confidence in your salvation, not to pride, but confidence in knowing that you are saved and knowing that you belong to him and walking in that confidence. Because that will make you much bolder and much more apt to present his word to another and to lead them out of confusion, out of fear. I guarantee you, when he brings you out of it, he will use you to bring another out of it. He's using me to bring you out of it. Don't click away. Don't pause the video. Listen to what's being said because he's speaking to you right now. Dost thou believe that? Dost thou believe that? I trust thou believest it. Mayest thou experience now the power of Jesus to forgive sin. Waste no time in applying to the physician of souls, but hasten to him with words like these. Jesus, Master, hear my cry. Save me, heal me with a word. Fainting at thy feet I lie. Thou my whispered plaint has heard. Don't, you don't need to comment. You don't need to expose yourself. I don't require anybody to do that here. You merely need to go to the Lord and lay your petition at his feet. Go and ask him, Lord, why do I feel so condemned? Why do I feel so guilty? Ask him to reveal to you the truth of the matter. I did in 2019, and he revealed it. Ask him why you're so sad and down. Ask him to reveal his truth to you, the truth of his word, and then wait for him to answer. Because if you're saved, just the fact that you know and are aware of your sin shows that you're saved. He's going to bring you through sanctification to a better place. He's done that to every one of us watching. And he'll do that for you too. You don't have anybody to talk to, and most of us don't either. Nobody understands where you're coming from. Yeah. We do. We're your brethren. We're your brothers and sisters, and we've been there too. So we fully understand where you're coming from. Go to the Lord. He's the one with forgiveness. He's the one with salvation. And no, I'm not speaking generally. I'm speaking to somebody very specific. You know who you are. I'm not going to name you out. But I don't want you to hesitate. Lord, put it in this person's heart to open themselves up to you, to let your light shine on their sins and their troubles and reveal them for what they are and open their heart to repentance so that they will see it and admit it and agree with you and with your word. Give them that peace that defies all understanding. Give them the confidence you've given the rest of us in our salvation to know that because we believe we're saved, to know that you have redeemed us. Not for pride, not for self-elevation, but for confidence so that we can walk in truth. Because your word is truth. Open this brother and sister up to your truth. Reveal it to them. Open their eyes, their heart, and their minds. Especially their heart. Give them hope. Something far greater than this. Not only do I pray this, Lord, for this one brother, I pray this for all brothers and sisters. 
all brothers and sisters. Because I know there's more watching that are in the same boat. Struggling with the same thing. My heart reaches out to them. Because I was there. I know what this feels like. It's horrible. Satan tries to bring it back every now and then. And I just push it away. My Lord is my portion. Lord, you are my portion. And though I have been a horrible person in my life, you are making me something else. I have been reborn into something new. And every day you make me more and more. I got to share amazing insights with my father today. Things that got him thinking. And his heart is changing and I hope it continues to change. I hope he can become more, more, more knowledgeable of you. And learn to respect you. And respect your authority and power more. And to look to you with longing. Even more than he already does. Lord, I love my brothers and sisters, and I know the struggles because I have the struggles too. You have brought me such a long way in just three and a half years. I pray you bring them double what you've done for me. You say in your word to outdo each other in blessing. Lord, I bless, I bless them double. In your name, I bless them double <coughs> with the things they need, namely forgiveness, perseverance, love, faith, hope. I pray you give this to all of us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this word and this devotion. Thank you for your mighty love that knows no limit, knows no boundary, cannot be restrained, and finds every one of us who belong to you and wins us to you. And thank you, Lord, for sacrificing for us so that we may have a chance, so that we may maybe sacrifice for you in your beloved name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for evening devotion. I, I honestly did not know it was going to go there. It just hit me all of a sudden. Somebody is watching this that is in this boat and needed to hear this message. I, I say with some confidence, there are several people that are watching this that need to hear this. And this video is going to end up being shared with a couple of individuals and they're going to need to hear this. And it is going to most likely be the deciding factor. It is something that may bring them fully into the threshold. The door is open for all of us. Walk in. Don't be scared. Only the first step is scary. The rest of them are amazing because you will embark on a new life, a life full of surprises and revelations, a life full of change and hope, a life that's going to show you a, a, a lot of terrible things and is going to purge you of a lot of terrible things, but it's going to show you amazing things, things that are going to strengthen you and embolden you and enable you to serve your God so much better. Your life will never be the same from this point on. It is going to be something remarkable for everyone to see because they will see the changes in you and they will see him manifest in you and in your actions. And it is a glorious thing to behold. I love it every time I see it because I can feel the Holy Spirit working. It's always a good thing. And he's doing that in all of us. He's changing all of us. Because the time's almost here for us to leave and he wants us ready and so he's going to make us ready and I pray he makes us all ready and we're all found worthy and we're all found doing what he gave us to do I love you all very much I bless you all in Jesus name and I will see you in the next video